when I first heard of this game, I kind of wrote it off as like a Candy Crush style game, like Juicy Fruits. It's a ridiculous name, but it's actually not that bad. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Juicy Fruits from Capstone Games, which is actually the second clue that it's not that bad. But this game is, well, it's a family weight lighter game of just trying to gather as much fruit as possible, as efficiently as possible, to build up your island, to fill orders, and to move your juice along the juice track. That's basically what you're doing. It's fairly light, it's fairly direct, it's fairly accessible, but it's also fairly rewarding. Let's walk you through a few turns. Now, I will say I have this set up for, well, one player. We have this board and this board, which would always be present. We have my board, and then we have any number of other boards that I'm not going to bother setting up because they don't matter for the sake of teaching this game. I'll also note that this juice track is optional, part of an advanced mode. I generally recommend it, although it depends on who you're playing with, because the game without this is definitely more accessible. So you could leave this out, especially if you're playing with complete gateway gamers or, or small kids or any of that kind of thing. Let's go ahead into the game. Game sequence is fairly simple to the point that I think it'll make the most sense if I just walk you through my turns one at a time, and the goal in this game is to get as many points and to earn as many points as possible before the round track moves down to the end and do so more efficiently than other players. What other players do mostly doesn't matter except how we're going to be vying for the same buildings. Let's walk you through a turn. On my turn, I'm going to go ahead and I will move one of these as far as I can. I've moved it one, so I'm going to gather one. I've moved, that's all. I just, I moved my line basket one. I could go ahead and take one line. That's my turn. I can then go ahead and buy one of these from the market here if I wanted to. In fact, I'm actually going to move it here. It'll be better in a second. You'll see. I can then go ahead and either fulfill an order from one of these boats or buy a building from one of the marketplaces. And then when all that's done, I can pay fruit to move up this track. I'm going to decline to do anything. Other players take their turn. It's back to me again. I'm going to go ahead and move my bananas too. See how efficient that was? I slid them down too because I moved the limes out of the way. And you can already start to get a feel for the puzzle and why we're trying to do things. Again, end of my turn, I can either go ahead and fulfill an order. I don't have any boats that require the combination of limes and bananas except for this one, but it needs another lime, so not much I can do there. And my lime stuck. But I could go ahead and gather one of these if I wanted to. And I just might consider it. It's a little early. It's a little early, so you know what? I think I'm going to hold off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to avoid doing that for right now. Next turn, I'm going to go ahead and move this. Gather one. Next turn after that, it already feels like I'm making a mistake. Let's see. I'll, I'll just go ahead and take it. It's all fine. Uh, next turn after that, I'm going to go ahead and move this here. Gather a lime. So I now have that lime. And now after this turn, I'm going to pay in the two lime and the two bananas. And I'm going to fulfill this boat order here. I'm going to go ahead and take four points, move my tracker up four because it's four over there. And I've also cleared up some space on my island. Now, if I want, I can go ahead and move over here, gathering two of these. Now, at this point, I am going to debate what to do. You know, we'll still wait another turn. Again, it's my turn again. We'll move this down here, taking one orange. And now I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and buy this over here. I'm going to buy this one over here. It's going to cost me one orange, two, two um, uh, tomatoes, I guess. I'll go ahead and pay those in. And I'll also get two points over there. We'll move up two. And then we'll advance this contract down one. You're going to have variable levels depending on the player count. But those that contract is going to tr keep track of how many of these can be actually be purchased before the game end triggers. You'll also be having fewer of these on the board at lower player counts. I'm going to grab this and put it onto my island over there, which we'll move in a second. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pay a fruit over here, and I'm going to move up my tracker on this board, collecting a point. As you go through the course of the game, you'll slowly have the opportunity to move these along the board. Probably should have moved it over here. That makes more sense, taking two points. You'll be moving this across the board over here, paying variable number of fruits, question marks means anything, specific fruit means specific fruit, as you try to get more and more points and make your way to the end, and some of the buildings potentially interact with that as well. But again, only in the advanced game, otherwise you remove them from the game over here. Uh, from there, we'll go ahead to my next turn, while I'll show you that advanced building. Building, I'm going to move this, taking one of either type, plus one. You always add plus one there. So for example, had I moved this down here, taking two fruits, I could have moved it one more, taking one. And I'm slowly creating this little pattern game of moving things around, taking stuff, but using those fruits to fulfill orders. So now we'll go ahead and move this one over here, taking a green. We'll pay in the green and the orange. And we'll get rid of this boat, getting another point. Now we can start moving things there. I want some more green, so I'm going to go ahead. I want some more orange, actually. Now I want more green, too. We'll move this green down over here, taking two green. We'll move this down, taking one and one. We'll move this. I don't even need to. I can go ahead and now that I've done that, I can pay this two orange and this green over here and remove this, moving very fur to two further along the track over there. But now I can go all the way over here with this. And you can get a sense for how your island is both clearing up as the game progresses, how you're gathering more and more fruit as your island becomes more clear, but as you also have the opportunity to gather buildings. 
In the buildings over here come in three basic varieties. We have better fruit baskets that give you the variety of different types of fruit, as well as giving you plus one to your moves. We're going to have these spots over here, which represent a specific building. Let's see if we can find that over here. Specific building types, if I can find it. Where is this? Oh, this is just this is just itself. Sorry, this is itself. This basically goes in the island and counts as five points, but it clogs your island. Or we have the bigger ones over here. So, for example, this one over here has me putting one of these down on the board. So I'd have to clog up my island significantly, but it's worth 18 points. So these over here, between the small ones, the medium ones over here, and the large ones, you have the opportunity to completely clog up your island, but potentially get a chunk of points for doing so. And then lastly, we have the ice cream carts. The ice cream carts are going to move along the island, giving you the opportunity to fill orders for ice cream based on this track in the bottom, showing you the specific types of ice cream and the points you get for fulfilling different types of ice cream as you move your ice cream carts along the island. Lastly, you have the fruit track, which as we said already, is advancing to the end. Game and triggers when you finally get to the end over here, which happens as we go ahead and empty these contracts, as you get to the last ice creams over there, and as you get to the end of the juice tracks, you'll be slowly advancing this slowly down, and then when it gets to the end, whoever has the most points wins in Juicy Fruits. Quick, simple, to the point, it's a rewarding little tableau engine in which you're trying to clear up your island, but trying to get more points and better buildings and better things, trying to use the combination of the two of them to ultimately give you the most efficient engine of fruit gathering, order fulfilling, juice factory ma machinations, and ice cream that you possibly can achieve. Ease of play. Very simple game to understand, very simple game to dive into. The core concept is move a thing, take a thing, move a thing, take a thing. Then when you're done, take an action. Either when you, when you move a thing, take a thing. Then either take a building or fulfill an order. Then go to the juice track. It's three steps, and three steps is the advanced game. It's two steps for the simple game. It's very quick, very clear. You'll have to explain, explain a few things to people, but really not that much at all. Very easy game to dive into. Comes in at around 45 minutes to an hour. Depends on who you're playing with, how slow they are, all that kind of things. But basically around 45 minutes to an hour. Player count, this is a 1-4 to four player game. I've played it at 2-3 and 4 players. I have not looked into the solo mode, unfortunately. I've played at 2-3 and 4. Honestly, all player counts are fine. Turns are so fast in this game that even at a four-player game, it feels like it's your turn before you know it. it. Again, it could slow down, especially if you're playing with kids, so maybe a little bit there. Really, two, three, and four were all very fine. As far as what I like, don't like, and conceal is not liking. The game is simple and rewarding. That's the main compelling aspect of Juicy Fruits is it's a simple and rewarding game. It has fast turns, it has quick tableau building, you're always getting better in some way, you're either clearing out your island, and that, that, that little moment where you get to slide something across the board and go, I get three oranges. It feels surprisingly powerful to gather three oranges, not like in real life. In real life it feels like a chore, but in, in this game it just feels fun to move your discs around, to slide things around the board, to unlock another boat, and to get a better, more powerful, more streamlined island and then turn around and cash those in for buildings. But maybe you want to get the buildings first because the player who gets the buildings first might have easier access to certain things and you might be locked out of it. So there's always a little balance of what you're trying to do and in what order. Filling boats versus getting upgrades versus using it for the juice track. It's a very simple game of gathering fruit and spending fruit. That's all it is. But what they do with that adds a decent amount of fun is just which way are you going to progress? How are you going to cascade forward in this game? Are you going to have better options? Are you going to have more space? Or you're just throwing it all into the juice track getting as much as possible? It's simple, I said that like four times, but it's simple and compelling at the same time. As far as what I don't like, it's a lighter game. It is a lighter game with not a lot of variety to the experience. Especially at higher player counts, you're going to see most of the buildings pretty simple. You're going to get a feel for what the game does and, and get it into your system pretty quickly, which means it's, it's a good game, it's a simple game, but there's not a lot of variety nor a lot of depth. Is it rewarding? Absolutely. Is there a lot of depth in replay? I think it depends on who you are, of course, but for myself, I tend to like heavier games. For me, the main appeal of this game, after my first few plays, first few plays were definitely enjoyable, but after my first few plays, the main appeal to me is the gateway aspect, or the playing with my family aspect, and not diving into it for its self's sake. While it's compelling, it also gets old quickly if you're looking for something heavier. As far as what I can see, I was not liking, again, on the lighter side, that will apply to you as well, if you're looking for a heavier versus lighter game. And secondly, is you could get stuck in a sequence of inefficient moves. This is especially worth noting if you're playing with young kids. You do want to guide them a bit to make sure that they are taking the right actions, because if you just get locked in a little puzzle of move one, move one, move one, move one, move one, there's small inefficiencies you can just get out of very quickly if you just upgrade a drop, or if you understand how the movement works. It's something you'll want to guide either gateway gamers or younger children along the way. It's, I mean, it's pretty simple and basic, but it doesn't mean you can't get clogged up into complete inefficiency at the same time. As far as final thoughts on Juicy Fruits, 
It's a 3.5 out of 5 for me. I enjoy the game. I think it's compelling. I think it's a solid gateway game. I think it looks nice and shiny on a shelf. The rulebook is very short and accessible. The gameplay experience is simple and rewarding and easy to dive into. And all of that's very positive while also feeling like it's a little bit on the lighter side, so it depends. As far as gateway game, phenomenal gateway game, highly recommend. As far as looking for your, for your personal collection, depending on who you are, if you're looking for something heavier, it, it won't be scratching that heavier itch. If you're looking for heavier games, it's good for a few plays, but then from there you'll probably move on from it, although I'm projecting onto you, but I mean, that's, that's my opinion. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, Honey Buzz. Honey Buzz is a great game from Elf Creek Games that I think takes the basic mechanics of Juicy Fruits to the next level. Not mechanics, different game, but it gives me that same feeling of, of upgrading, of getting stronger, of getting better, but it offers a bit more depth to the experience. And if you're looking for something a little likely equally gateway, but a little bit more compelling, is Project L. Project L by Board Cubator, very solid again, a little bit of a tableau building, getting stronger and getting more powerful as you build up your tableau in quick, simple, rewarding actions. I think there's a drop more going on in the strategy, but equally as beautiful and compelling as Juicy Fruits. Until next time, I hope you enjoy this video, and as always, have a good one.